Welcome to the Corporate Finance Institute. This is our course on the fundamentals of credit. In this course, we've got a lot to cover. We'll start by looking at what credit is. Then we'll go on to explore the different types of credit that are available. From there, we can look at loans and the various categories and subcategories of loans that exist. Building on that, we will look at various types of credit analysis that would be performed by a credit analyst. We'll then go on to explore the five C's of credit, which are critical for the entire credit process from start to finish. Throughout this course, we'll be laying down foundational concepts that will then be built on in later courses as you progress through our Credit Analyst Certification Program. We've got a lot of exciting stuff to cover in this course, so let's jump in and get going. Introduction to Credit What is credit? Credit is created whenever one party receives resources from another without immediate payment for those resources. At the center of this diagram here, we have the credit receiver. And the credit receiver can receive resources from one of two different types of counterparties. Either a lender, as shown on the left, or the seller of products and services. Both of those are referred to as credit providers. With the first example on the left, a lender. The lender gives money to the credit receiver, also called the borrower. And ultimately, over time, the borrower has to repay money back to the lender. This is what's called a loan. Then, on the other side of this diagram, we have credit, but it's not a loan. We actually have a business that's giving products or services to the credit receiver. And eventually, over time, the credit receiver has to pay for those products or services back to the company, another form of credit that's extended. So when we refer to credit, we're speaking very broadly about both loans and credit between companies and customers. When we talk about credit, which is a promise to pay for something of value later, we are typically talking about either a company or an individual that's taking on that credit. So companies use credit to grow and operate their business. For short-term working capital, such as inventory, Companies will go to banks or other lenders to get the money they need to buy inventory, which they will then sell and turn into revenue. In terms of longer-term investments, companies will also go to lenders to take out longer-term loans that they may use to grow their business by building things like factories or to hire more people or expand their operation. Now, on the other side here, we have individuals. Individuals also use credit. They may have credit cards for managing their day-to-day -day expenses, or they may have longer-term loans such as mortgages. If they want to make a major purchase like buying a car or buying a house, they'll often use credit to facilitate that purchase. So throughout this course, we'll be looking at both the company's perspective and individual's perspective when we're talking about credit. We will also look at things from the borrower's point of view and from the lender's point of view. Let's look at how and why credit is used. Credit can help companies or individuals buy things that they need to have right now, but that they don't have the cash to pay for in full at the moment. So if we think of a company's operations and we look at its balance sheet as a way of analyzing its operations, we know that companies want to build the assets on their balance sheet to grow their business. The assets, such as inventory or property, plant, and equipment shown here, are what generate revenue and ultimately build and grow the business. So the company wants to get those assets as quickly as possible. Now it may not have enough cash to get those assets that it wants right away. So what it will do is it will create liabilities in the form of credit which could include line items shown here, like trade and other payables, or towards the bottom, long-term debt, which would be repaid over a period of time. So the company is gonna add both assets and liabilities to its balance sheet when it uses credit to grow the company. 
Now let's look at some more examples of credit. For companies, there are typically three ways they use credit to operate and grow their business. One is to fund working capital, which is short term and current assets. It includes items like inventory. So the company wants to buy inventory and it uses credit to do that. Two, funding longer term growth projects or capital expenditures, such as building a factory. Three, funding acquisitions, which means buying other businesses. These are three of the most common reasons that companies use credit. On the personal side, individuals also use credit, for example, to buy a car that they can't afford in the moment, but know that they have the income to support monthly payments for. They may choose to use credit to buy a car. Or a student who wants to go to university, but doesn't have any income at the time, but knows that in the future, they will have income from having completed university. So they would use credit to pay for their university program. There are three ways a company can fund its operations or its investments. The first is with cash that it already has on the balance sheet. If the company doesn't have enough cash on the balance sheet, then it can issue equity by creating new shares and selling them to investors and getting the money from those investors as cash that it can use. Or it can issue credit or debt and use the money that it gets from the debt investors as cash to fund its new projects and its new initiatives. So these are the three sources, cash that it already has, new equity, or new credit and debt. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of cash. Cash is always accepted as a source of funding for a project. That goes without saying. It's very liquid, which means it can be accessed immediately. And there's no cost to getting the cash that a company already has other than foregoing the opportunity cost of investing it in something else. On the flip side, companies generally don't keep very large cash balances that they can access when they have a big project that they want to execute. They also want to preserve the cash that they do have in case of emergencies more so than spending on new projects. So it's a balance between keeping enough cash for emergencies but not leaving excessive cash that could be used to fund projects. Now let's look at equity. If a company doesn't have enough cash on hand already, it could consider raising equity. In order to do that, it will issue shares of its common stock and sell it to investors. This can be good for companies that don't have access to debt and aren't able to borrow money. It's good for high-risk businesses or high-risk projects where debt is not suitable. And it does not have an ongoing requirement to pay interest, nor does it have to be repaid in the form of principal. Now let's look at the trade-offs. Equity is more expensive than debt because it's higher risk. Since investors are taking more risk with equity, they need to be compensated with a higher expected rate of return. So even though the cost of equity is not a direct cash cost like interest or principal repayments, the expense is an implied cost and it's higher than the cost that lenders expect. By issuing equity, you're giving away ownership and control of the business. For that reason, owners of businesses typically want to issue as little equity as they can. Once a company has issued equity to outside investors, they are then accountable to those stockholders. They need to provide them with ongoing financial information, as well as access to decision making or perhaps even board representation, depending on how much equity is sold and to whom. So equity is good in that it does not put a cash flow strain on the business, meaning the equity does not have to be repaid with cash flow, like a loan. But on the flip side, you're giving away ownership and giving away control. Now let's take a look at credit and debt. It's also good for long-term project funding, just like equity or cash. The interest payments on credit are tax deductible. So you're actually paying on an after-tax basis 
less than the actual nominal interest amount. Borrowing money by issuing credit or debt won't dilute the existing shareholders or change the ownership structure of the company. It's cheaper than equity because it's lower risk, because debt is repaid before equity investors receive any money. On the flip side, you have to pay careful attention when you use debt to manage your liquidity. Interest payments and principal repayments have to be made, and cash flow has to be on hand and well managed to meet those requirements. If the company is a high credit risk, the interest rate is going to be high, and so debt may become expensive for some companies. And finally, you're adding financial risk to the business by taking on debt. Debt can cause a company to become insolvent if it's not able to repay the loan, unlike equity, which cannot push a company into insolvency. So in summary, companies trade off between these three sources of funding, cash that they already have on hand, issuing shares and raising new equity capital, or borrowing money by issuing credit or debt. As you've seen in this lesson, there are pros and cons of each, and it's important for companies to get the right mix of the three.